Thank you all for joining us here in the lovely Wichita, Kansas at Tallgrass 21. Personally, I have to say I'm totally having a fangirl moment. Um, getting to see you in person, Sav and Riley, and oh my gosh, you're so much more adorable in person. Um, this is just kind of a amazing moment for me. Sorry, I had to get that out there. Um, God. I got to go with where this all started from. We're here to talk about Chasing Chasing Amy. And it started with, of all things, a TED Talk. We all love them. We all learn and grow from them. How did you get into doing a TED Talk? I got into doing a TED Talk by complete accident. Um, I was getting this very persistent Facebook ad that was basically saying, hey, you're young. Uh, we have a program that's we want young people to do uh, a TED Talk. And so it was this thing called the TED Residency, and it was through a, a spot sponsored by Adobe, Project 1324. And they get people from 13 to 24 into programs. And uh, I just ignored the ad a couple of times, I won't lie. And then I was like, well, it's free to apply to. And got nothing to lose. It's a couple of minutes out of my day. So I attached my director's reel, a still from my last movie, a one minute video with a vague, very vague pitch for a, an LGBTQ positive uh, TED talk. And I thought I'd never hear back. Um, th a couple months later, maybe a month later, I got an email saying I was a finalist. And I was like, well, that worked out. Great. <laughs> now I get to meet some people from TED. So I did an interview. And it was the best 30 minutes of it maybe ever had on Zoom. It was fantastic. And they were like, well, we really like you, but we've not heard an idea for a TED Talk. So if you had to give one tomorrow, what would it be about? And for years, I had been thinking about making a documentary on Chasing Amy. So I basically told my very specific story that you end up seeing in Chasing Chasing Amy. Um, and they were like, huh. That is the most narrow idea for a TED Talk we've ever heard. <laughs> uh, you'll know in three weeks. Three days later, I got an email saying, hey, you're moving to New York, and we're, Adobe's paying for it. So I will always be grateful for that opportunity. I spent three months in New York having the time of my life learning from so many different people in the TED residency program, and it all uh, came together with this TED Talk, um, this eight-minute TED Talk that told a short version of my story. And then the last day of the TED residency, we shot our first day of Chasing Chasing Amy. Oh, wow. And of course, out of this, you got the moment. I mean, all of us in the world want someone we admire and look up to. In your case, it did happen to be Kevin Smith himself mm -hmm. making a public response on social. I believe it was a tweet, mm -hmm. but anything with the Facebook, the Instagram, the getting the call out that this person I'm talking about knows I'm alive. And then we get into Chasing Chasing Amy, which mm -hmm. the original Chasing Amy is a lovely rom-com would not be able to be fully played today or made today but it's one of the nice things is we now have the modern version with its own lovely love story um so please share with us about i mean your love story played out on camera and you ended up with a gorgeous bride out of it uh, yeah, I mean, thankfully the wheels were in motion before the documentary ever started. Uh, really worked out for me um, that I just happened to have a camera crew with me for so much of this. And, you know, what ended up being a total accident was that we just now have this lovely time capsule of this period of our lives where we're becoming the fully embodied versions of ourselves. I mean, what do you think, hon? Uh, yeah, I mean, this. who can just look back and say that they just have like their this giant part of their relationship recorded and not only recorded just turned into the a movie that is uh more i could, i would never imagine uh that it would turn out this way when i like met this stranger on the internet that became my friend I know, and I love that because you all were much younger in different countries, even if I understand correctly, when you first started talking to each other and the friendship developed. And I got to say that friendship is so important with a relationship and it just watching the two of you progress through gives me hope. Thank you. So, um, and this is just your your courtship is going to these sites and these locations that the movie was shot at. Mm -hmm. 
Did you have an affection for this movie, or was Sav the one that introduced you to it? I had no affection for this movie. I did not have, uh, didn't, I had never watched any Kevin Smith movies. I uh, didn't really know who he was. In fact, when he told me what this movie was about, because he raved about it, and he told me what it was about, and uh, as a lesbian, I was like, this sounds awful. I will never watch it. <laughs> and in fact, I'm kind of offended that you told me about it. Uh, but he kept going on about it, and we were like, he was my best friend. We had the same taste. I was like, okay, there is no way Sav is recommending me something that is trash. So, and I felt a little bit left out. So I was like, okay, I'm going to watch this movie. And I watched it, and it blew my mind. Uh, because it really is wonderful, um, and it became very important to me. So it was another thing that he gave me. Great. I love that. Um, with this, of course, you do go to the record shop, mm -hmm. and it shows that it has not changed much. Mm -hmm. What was that? I mean, what was the experience of getting to go there, the restaurant, the, the different experiences? It was surreal getting to go to all of the Chasing Amy locations for the first time, just because at that point in my life, you know, I had seldom been outside of Kansas, really, you know, as an adult. Um, I had just moved to New York. I had just done the TED Talk. Everything felt like a whirlwind in this grand adventure. So getting to go to, you know, uh, Kevin Smith country, so to speak, and getting to see these locations in real life was like a wonderful experience. And it was the beginning of, okay, well, these places are just places. You know, they have a life far beyond the, you know, two hours, the two and a half hours, maybe it's a long movie, um, two hours of, of chasing Amy. Right. And so to see that so much of it hadn't changed was surreal, but also to see, you know, how life moves on in the case of the diner. Right. It was like, OK, well, these places only have as much meaning as we're ascribing to them. Um, and so that was an important lesson for me, even on the shoot date before the movie becomes this extremely personal journey. And we also have with you here, we have Layla and Tyler. And Layla, I gotta say, I, I, I do Google stalking. Totally <laughs> on the up and up, what it pulls through on the regular web. I'm not, I'm not Penelope Garcia. I kind of wish I was. Um, but you are the creative producer and founder of Mama Film. And it's the village at a crossroads of art advocacy, art and advocacy, where storytellers, change makers, and nurturers come together to champion humanity through a maternal gaze. It's a mouthful. You got it. And I, when I saw, I got goosebumps. And I'm like, I cannot wait to meet this woman, to have it be that we want to love all people and we want to nurture them. How did this come to be for you? Can you just say that to my kids because I need them to also understand that people like me. No, um, get your phone and record it. Yes, <laughs> honestly. No, I met Sav actually. I'm the former executive director of Tallgrass. Um, also happened to end up in Kansas. I'm not from here, but um, now have made a, a life here. Um, and I met Sav here at Tallgrass in 2017. Um, and I think it was my last year um, as executive director, and I really just loved getting to know him um, and you know you were so tenacious and like just like I'm you know just fun and we had a great time and we continued to sort of hang out at Sundance we'd run into each other um, and then in 2019 uh, and you Tyler and Sav were working on the film and they needed a grant writer I mean, I've worked in nonprofit for years and I hate writing grants, but, you know, I went to film school 20 some years ago and what I really wanted to do is make movies, especially after being around, you know, film festivals for so many years and meeting so many filmmakers um, and watching the creative process. And I mean, producing a film festival is essentially like producing a film. Um, and so when I heard they were looking for a grant writer, I was like, sign me up because I really wanted to be part of the project. And I loved the TED talk. Actually, we hung out at the TED studios. Do you remember? Yeah. Yes. I came to New York to visit you. Um, and so it's just, you know, the project is, and I know Sav says this, it's not the movie that we set out to make, but, and, and having
having written the grants, I, I think back to like those very first grants that we wrote, and they're so different than in many ways, not not entirely, but very different in with than the movie that we ended up with. And I think it um, is a real testament to you as a filmmaker, like as a human being, your relationship with Riley. It's a love story, and it just makes me you know feel so proud to be a part of it. And it really is mission aligned for me, and and the stories that I want to help put out into the world. Good. And we need more people like that. And we need more... We need females making movies. Yes, we and do. And we need to show more acceptance. People should be comfortable with who they are and they should be allowed to be who... Uh, sorry, I'm I'm soapboxing. Um, <laughs> we did too. <laughs> yes, but it was your piece. <laughs> um, and Tyler, I know you are an attorney uh, licensed in Kansas and California. Yes. And please tell us a little bit about your part in this. Um, my part in this, it really starts spring of 2016, which is when I met Sav. Uh, we're both graduates of the University of Kansas, and uh, yep, You're right sure? here. Yes. We can hold hands too if you want. We can, <laughs> absolutely. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> um, and I met him at an alumni event when he came out for spring break. I think you were, were you junior or senior at junior. that time? Junior. You're just a junior at that time. Um, and we got started talking and he mentioned to me, I've got this idea for a documentary. I've still got a few shorts I want to do. I've got to graduate college at that time. But when I'm ready to uh, get started on this first feature, can I give you a shout? So absolutely gave him my card. And then about 18 months later, I get in email. Hey, this is Sav. I don't know if you remember me. Of course I remember you. What's going on? And uh, he told me uh, I'm getting ready to do this documentary. It's about chasing Amy um, and I need to get set up business wise and I'm looking for uh, people that can help on the producing side of things and he basically invited me to come along on this journey with him. Uh, so that's how I got involved with it. And I'm so glad we did. And I think it was, you emailed me and then about six weeks later, uh, we had you set up and that was December of 18, right? Your, your, your memory is, is some of it is a little hazy, but yes, effectively that's what happened. I basically said, Tyler, uh, you know a lot of stuff about the law. You know stuff about the law. I don't know a ton about the law. I don't know. I don't know how to not get screwed on legal contracts. Could you help me out? And he took me on as a client while I was still at KU Film School. And so he was an early, you know, investor into the idea of chasing chasing Amy, but also his belief in me as a filmmaker. This is he's how I got connected to Tallgrass. He was the one that was like, you need to meet Leela, you know. And so I I couldn't have directed this movie without their support as producers. Their notes. They're incredible story notes when it was really difficult to get through the edits. I mean, I'm just so grateful to the two of them um, for everything they've done to not only, you know, protect the film, but protect me to look out for me. You know, I always thought of Leela as like my festival mom. And when she was like, you know, I want to, I'll write grants for you. I said, really? <laughs> You're like important. What do you want to do hanging out, with, hang out with us, you know? And, uh, you know, now this is her first feature and it's coming back to Tallgrass, a, a festival that she co-founded. I mean, what a beautiful Full, full circle moment. Tyler was Tallgrass's first intern. I mean, just a, a beautiful oh, moment. Gosh, it's another of the synchronicity of, <laughs> and Tyler, you were next to impossible to find. Anything on your social profile is very low. That is by just, design. Well, I figured, <laughs> but I wanted to assure you, hard to find things on you. Several people with the same name, but they were not you. Um, <laughs> I think there's some guy out in San Francisco. <laughs> there's somebody tech. wearing an orange jumpsuit now, and I knew that wasn't you. Mm, I hope not. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, I mean, if you keep hanging out with this crew. still young. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you tell us about, I mean, you've got other shorts that are out there. Of course, we want to see wonderful things for Chasing Chasing Amy, mm -hmm. but we also want to see wonderful things for you um, and your growing family. I mean, I'm sorry, you're just your darling. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm adopting you both. I'm now the crazy <laughs> aunt out of Texas. Um, have Can we see some of your other shorts? Do you have projects you're working on that you can talk about? 
you know, there's a lot of stuff in the works, and you know, a lot of stuff was on pause due to the double strike happening in the industry. And as things start to bounce back, I'm really excited to get back into development with uh, a couple of new features. Um, you know, there are a lot of stories I, I want to tell, and, and nowadays I get the question a lot of like, do you do you primarily do documentary? And I'm like, well, I, I guess I do now. I spent the last five years on this. You know, I spent half of my time as a creative person working on this movie, and so it's nice that. This is going. This has gone from a, a thing I was making to a thing that is now out in the world for people to be able to see. You know, as we're pursuing distribution for everything, um, and I'm really excited to be able to tell some more optimistic stories, ideally with this crew right here, um, about, about things of like you know how we're more similar than we are different. You know, stuff that has hope, stuff that has optimism, stuff about how we're actually better together than we are uh, separated. And I'm and I'm stoked to be able to tell those stories next. Excellent. I I do know you were at uh, Diff earlier this year as well, the Dallas Independent, wasn't it? No, it was one other than I tell you it's no, it's Bentonville. Yes, Bentonville. Yes. Sorry, I'm getting my film. <laughs> you get to a point where you get your film festivals confused, but yes, you were at Bentonville. Um, and do you have any other festivals coming up this year, or this is kind of the end of the circuit for the year? Oh my gosh, I think Lila could answer all the stuff we have coming up. Uh, thank you, a former executive director of the Film Festival Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've taken on the the festival uh, management role here, but I think like this month alone, um, I mean, we premiered in June at Tribeca, and then this month alone, we have like 19 screenings in October. Um, I mean, all over the country and all over the world. Yesterday, we got invited to a festival in Nepal. Spain. We screened. Uh, I think by the end of the year, we'll have been in 12 different countries um, and you know 30 different states and 50 different you know festivals. So I mean, it's really just a. I, it's a, it just proves that the story is so wonderful and relatable. And I really chuck it up to this love story between the two of them. And you know that that's really the heart of the movie. And that's a kind of movie that people want to see right now. You know, we we just have been through this really traumatic time in our lives that everyone experienced together and um, I mean there's amazing documentaries out there that aren't so uplifting but this one really does it gives you a sense of hope and and and, and love yeah. and how do we as viewers and fans and admirers of this how do we support how do we help get this piece where it really needs to be uh, if people want to support Chasing Chasing Amy, besides coming out to see the movie at your local film festival and asking your local film festival to program it, you can support us by leaving a kind review on IMDb or Letterboxd. That stuff goes a long way. Tell people you want to see it. Create a demand for it. Um, you know, there aren't a lot of LGBTQ films that get the kind of visibility that we're getting, especially ones made by trans people with trans people at the forefront, right? You know, this is a, a very highly specific story, um, and we would love the opportunity to share it with people. So those are some of the ways that you can support by creating that demand and telling people, hey, we want to see it. Because guess what? Ten different countries right now want to play uh, this queer trans story, especially in countries that you wouldn't think have an LGBTQ audience because people tell us that there's not. But we know that there is. So uh, that's the way you can support. And I also I need it to get into distribution so that I can turn around and own my personal copy so that I can have my double feature of Chasing Amy, Chasing, Chasing Amy when I'm sitting at home with the popcorn and just chilling out for a weekend. That's like the ultimate double feature. Oh, you're going to cry a lot that weekend, I got to tell you. Yeah. It's a beautiful love story. What can I say? Thank you. So, thank you so much for joining us. How can we find and follow you? Oh, gosh. Well, let's go down the line here. Uh, you can find me at on Instagram at MamaFilm1, and my website is mama.film. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at tyler.j.emerson um, and at my law firm in Wichita, Conley, Schmidt, and Emerson. You can find me wherever Sav is, <laughs> wherever Chasing Chasing Amy is, and my personal Instagram, RSN my name. Uh, and you can fo follow me on Instagram at Sav Rogers Film, and you can support Chasing Chasing Amy by following us on all platforms at Chasing Amy Doc. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you.